I'm pleased to see the number of people registered and the participants are getting into, oh, 125 already. So this will be very useful, successful webinar uh, as long as I do my job correctly. Research Life webinar, 22 September, 2021. Navigating the new Research for Life content portal. Okay, save time and discover content easily. Uh, I'm hoping that after 25, 30 minutes, we can really go to demonstrations and talk about all kinds of unique options. Okay, so we're all aware of the fact that Research for Life is, uh, provides institutions, lower income countries with online access to academic and professional peer-reviewed content. It is one of the largest collections health, agriculture, environment, science and information, law and social sciences. We have over 10,000 registered institutions and you can read yourself the number of books. Again, you're all from different countries. There are countries where publishers grant access. There are other countries where publishers don't grant access. There will be some slides to address that. So later on, we'll talk about that. So how do you get to the new content portal? the Unified Content Portal. Another key thing that'll happen today is I will talk about collections as opposed to programs, okay? So you can go directly, you can bookmark the Unified Content Portal link. If you're only interested in agriculture or research and development and innovation, you can go directly to Agora and Arty. This is, we have three content portals. It has to do with the dynamics of the UN agencies, and that's about all I know about it. You can also log in from the tab on the top part of the Research for Life page. Available desktop, laptops, mobile phones, etc. Okay, once you click on one of these URLs, you will get the same secure login. Okay, nothing different. I'm sure many of you have already discovered this. So a little bit of this be repeat, but then I hope we can do some dynamic things in the demos, okay? And the questions and answers. So we have here the initial screen of the Unified Content Portal. You can see right away, you can do a sum and search. Uh, if there's one thing I will repeat and repeat and repeat, and many of you have discovered this already is, the content portal is giving you access to titles of books, titles of journals, titles of publishers, titles of databases, titles of reference sources, but there is not a keyword search tool. So you have to click on summon to search across all research for life to pick up the material for a specific search that is available in your country. So that's very important. I will repeat that, I'm sure. Uh, we have five different languages, and I have uh, just displayed the initial page in French. If you are from a Francophone country, we are working on creating a French MOOC, and this will be open for registration by mid-October and will be from the end of October to the early December. All the material will be in French. So we will have a French MOOC and we are very excited finally to have a dynamic searching tool for the French speaking countries. That'll be Francophone countries in Africa and Haiti, of course. Okay, so if you click on this Welcome to Research, if you open Welcome to Research for Life and you scroll down, immediately you see access to the five collections, okay? Even though I've still used the word, yeah, programs in, in one of my slides, I may ch in one of my notes, I may change that. So Hanari, uh, Hanari, uh, Goali, and Awari are all in the Unified Content Portal only. Agora and Goali, and already have their own. So if you click on them, you will go to their individual ones. If you wanna to go to the global one from one of those, you click on the Research for Life logo that's at the top right corner that's displayed somewhere. So first, and first thing, you can get the specific material for your, your collection 
directly from the Unified Content Portal. Simple as that. We will click on Agora. Agora is displayed. You see it says Agora, content associated with Agora. You can click on Home to eliminate this. Key things in the left column, you have collections, you have content type, you have a whole series of filters. The other key thing is the access key box. You see the P for titles provided, you see OA for open access content. Do you know that uh, we index, we include all the directory of open access journals. So they would be listed as open access content. You have free content. And then when publishers don't grant access, you get the black box, unfortunately. Okay, uh, let's go to databases. We're now in the content dropdown menu and you have journals, books, reference sources, databases, free collections, publishers, etc., and subjects and recent resources. Uh, one thing I will talk a bit about is the databases and reference sources are underutilized resources. What we have there are some hidden gems. So if, if you're a very sophisticated searcher, very knowledgeable, I say spend some time looking at the reference sources and databases. You will find some useful tools for your discipline or for your uh, users. Okay, uh, here we are. This is a list of databases. There's a total of 43. You can do it by collection. And then you can see Hanari has 31, Agora has 22, et cetera. Okay, uh, again, if you want to do a keyword search using Summon, you click on the magnifying glass and the box there, search across all research for life, dot, 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 displays. So you can, anytime you want, go do a keyword search. Uh, again, the access key is here with the green P, meaning you have access to the title, to the database, okay? Journals. This is a huge list. I have, if you want to, I have listed, let's see, environmental, let's see if I can get my cursor working. Yeah, there we go. Environmental Sciences and John Wiley as the publisher. And if you want to get rid of these, you click on the X that is available there. So we have done a search to only list environmental science journals and John, John Wiley as a publisher. The problem with this page is there's no A to Z list, no A to Z list. We, one of the features we would like to add when we upgrade the system is an A to Z list here. Okay, because you're familiar with that from the old database, from the old content portal. Publishers do have an A to Z list, so you can look up a specific publisher. Some publishers list their journals and books together. Other publishers like John Wiley have a separate one for books. John Wiley for Cochrane Library, which is a evidence-based medicine tool and John Wiley for journals. So John Wiley as a publisher can grant access to books in some countries and choose not to grant access to journals, okay? So I hope that makes sense to everyone. We go on, browse by subject is very dynamic. There are 193 subjects. So you browse by subject, uh, you can see right there, agricultural sciences, analytical chemistry, animal health, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You can get the list of journals and books and reference sources and databases, free collections, et cetera, for that subject. And I have gone ahead and been <clears throat> excuse me, done a unique one called biodiversity. And you can see you can limit it to collection. So here we have biodiversity and a whole list of, you can see journal, 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 journal. Books will be here too on this subject. And then of course you can link to directly if you have the green P, you drink link directly to the resource, okay? Uh, there are some other features that are useful. Uh, everybody calls this a hamburger menu. 
Some countries use the sandwich menu. I just say the menu. Okay, so we have clicked on the three horizontal bars here, and this drop down menu appears. There are two, three interesting things here. We'll talk about search content, personal sign in first, and then we'll talk about reports. Okay, so search content can be very useful. I want a specific journal. I want to know all the publishers and journals and books that have public health in the title. Okay, so you can limit it to publication field, all fields, author name. I want to look up this author. I know he published a book. So you have the uh, Boolean logic there and or not. You can do it in relevance, newest and oldest first. So I have completed here a search on public health. And you can see that there are 252 titles. These are the books, these are the journals, as I said. Uh, the first one is a journal. The second one, let's see if I can get the curse working, is a journal. The third one is a publisher. So there's a publisher that does public health only. Okay, so this is a very useful look, a useful tool to find material in your discipline, the titles of books and journals, as I said. Uh, the other option I talked about from the menu is the personal sign in. Okay, so you can either be an existing user or you can register. Once you log in, if you click on the stick figure that says you, your institution is logged in, you, you see first institutional Hanari trainer, my name, my ID, and then my profile. So now I have opened my personal sign in, okay, my personal uh, resource. Okay, so what does this give you? What are the options? Again, for the material that is listed in the Unified Content Portal or one of the other content portals, you can set up, you can save a search. You have a list of all the titles that use the word pregnancy, books, journals, etc. You want to be able to go back to this. You can save the search. Uh, you can view your search history you can create a search alert. So if a new journal or book or resource about a uh, database about pregnancy is listed, is added, you can have this listed and get an uh, alert to no notify you of a new title. Okay, so this is up to individuals if you choose to do this. Remember, you first have to be logged into Research for Life. Okay, last but not least, Back to the menu, we're going to look at the country offer. Okay, so we go to select a country. I selected Ghana. I looked up university, faculty, and college. This is telling you what you have access to. See the green? Okay, you can see a list there. Full text, there are 51,000 books available in Ghana, 7,500 journals, 46 reference sources, and nine databases okay so here's your what the publishers are granting to in ghana now ghana i'm sorry to say is a country where some of the major publishers choose not to grant access if i had put in bhutan or belize we would have had a larger number if i had put in some of the group b countries like morocco we would have a smaller number and then here if i can get the cursor working are all the titles listed? And there's a bit of a code offered to everyone, offered to your country has no code, offer beginning next year, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this is very valuable for you to look at. There are some subtleties though with the select institution category. If you are in a teaching hospital, instead of saying university, faculty, and college, you have teaching hospital you may have access to more material. There are a couple publishers that go to this level where they make uh, different material available at a university and the teaching hospital, okay? Uh, there's, this is again, back to the Unified Content Portal. There's a very nice little help uh, page and it lists tips, 
con how to contact about recidral A, frequently asked questions, and access issues. So this would be good, especially if you're doing training. You can see right here, click on the person on the top, at the top of the page. After logging in, you'll see that the person changes to be this stick figure. Okay, it's dark here, and then you get the stick figure. Basic information like that. There's also a link to training, and uh, particularly useful for people who are doing training is the Librarians Hub. If you're interested more about publishing, there's an Authors Hub. Uh, there's information about the MOOC. There's information about uh, the webinars. We have a series of webinars that have gone on, and you may want to look at the list and download a PowerPoint or listen to one of the webinars. For example, I was working actually this morning earlier. Uh, there's a workshop in in Ghana, and someone asked about uh, publishers wavering waiving fees, and that's discussed in one of the webinars. So I referred that person to that. Okay, what is summon? Very briefly, we'll go over Summon. I think it's important enough to include because this does two things. It gives you access to journal articles. It gives you access to book chapters by keyword. And each Summon is matched to what is available in your country. Okay, Google like search engine, search terms, can be displayed with links directly to the full text online. You can limit, refine the searches. Citations can be saved with options to email, print, or export to bibliographic management software. Okay. It automatically, this is what's telling you. Salmon performs a search in the country-specific environment. In other words, country offered defined by the publishers where they identify with the country, in this case, Ghana, as I showed you before, what they will grant access to, okay? So again, the two ways to get into Summon are using uh, the search box from the initial content portal page, all three of them will have it, or clicking on the magnifying glass. Very briefly, okay, we've done a search for hospital infections in developing countries. I put them in quotes, so to limit it to more precise information, and let's see what kind of results we got. 1,863 results. I don't remember what country we're in. Uh, you can add results beyond your library's collection if you choose. Right here, you get the link to the full text. You also get a preview, okay? Uh, you have a series of filters on the left-hand column. Here, we've limited it to last five years and nursing, a discipline, and now we have 54 results about uh, hospital infections and developing countries that apply to nurses. You've all used filters before, just remember to clear them, okay? Those options are available. Here's an example of a preview, which gives you a, usually a pretty good abstract, which will let you know if you really want to read this article or not, okay? Uh, if you click on the little, okay, there's a little box here. Uh, this will send the citation to the cart. So you click on these boxes, you send the citation to the cart, and that's where you can print, email, or explore, export to the bibliographic software. Okay, I've done it several times with Zotero, so I know it works. There's an advanced search option that allows you to build your filters in, your refine, refinements in immediately in the search. Okay, last 12 months, three years, five months, date, uh, content type. You may want to only see book chapters because you need this material for a lecture. And then language options too. Uh, I, I've lost track of time. I think we're pretty good. Uh, please put demo requests or questions in the chat box. We will look, focus on hidden gems, databases and reference sources. Okay, I just have some examples down here because uh, I think they're useful, but I'm, I'm please put any ideas you have in the chat box. Let me take a quick look at the chat box. 
mostly greetings. Okay. And we're in very good shape, sir. Saving a search is a nice feature. Thank you, Onan. Okay. So I, what I'm going to do now is un stop sharing. Okay. And now I can see a little bit better some of the comments. Okay. I'm going, to, I see more people that I've actually physically met. William, thank you for joining. Okay. Uh, let me go to do a search in Google Scholar and see if it works right. I'm going to say this. You must go to Research for Life because that adds links, okay? Adds links to the material that is available through Research for Life, assuming it works correctly. So I'm going to share a different screen here and let me make sure I get the right one. I think, yes, this is the one, okay? So I have logged in and the first thing I'm gonna do is go to collections. No, I'm sorry, my mistake. I'm gonna go to databases and then I'm going to find Google Scholar. I am looking at, here it is. I am looking at Google Scholar Using the sermon search architecture, it is linking to what is available to you from Research for Life, okay? So here we are, this looks just like everything else, but if you look up, it says login researchforlife.org. So that's telling you, you are going to Google Scholar through Research for Life. And let's type in, would anyone like to suggest a search? Someone will have to read it to me. If not, I will do the hospital infections. I don't think you need the end anymore, but I'll put it in. Uh, out of habit, developing countries. Let's see if we get what we get for results. Okay. First one, sometimes, sometimes things work properly, okay? Uh, for my examples, when you do demos, you don't, don't always know what you got. First one, research for life full text. Fourth, fifth one, research for life full text. Next one, research for life full text. Some already have PDFs that are available because they're open access journals or for other reasons. I, but we now have linked this to Research for Life. So if I click on the first one, let's see what happens. Nothing so far. Let me click again, there we go. You are familiar with this, okay? This is our 360 link from Research for Life, and there's your access to the journal article okay so uh, that's why i'm suggesting when you go into research for life google scholar you get these links so it makes your searches much more useful because you can get to the full text in many cases okay so having done that do we have any requests for google scholar search not yet. Uh, let me, maybe the participants can just type in the chat box. Okay, please. And Go we'll ahead. do one more for somebody. And then we'll see if that one also gives us results that link to the Research for Life full text. Okay. If Kim would like to add some comments about how this actually works, that would be fine too. All right, uh, there is one. Let me. Uh, it's, uh... I think I can open the chat. And... Okay, uh, all right. Let's do a couple of these. Misinformation on COVID 19. Okay, we'll come back and do a, one or two more of these. Okay. Okay, you know, Scholar is not, is more sophisticated, more dynamic, more precise in terms of research literature than 
just searching in Google. And already though, that we have 30,000 results. So we, the person that suggested it could look at this and let's see, it should be by relevancy and include citations, sort by relevance. So you're getting the ones that match those words best. And again, full text view, PDF, research for life, journal uh, MIR. Okay, I forget what that stands for. So if we click on this, here we are. No holdings were found for this journal. Okay, so this doesn't always work perfectly. Let's try this one. Here we are, and we can get, browse right into the journal. You may have to look up the issue and the page number, but we have access through Research for Life. Uh, let's do one more. Let me see if I can get the chat up. I saw it. Ah, okay, we, we have to, I'm sorry, we have to get out of health. We could stay in health all day. We're looking at tobacco and agriculture. Okay. Let me close the chat. Okay, smokeless tobacco, world agriculture. Again, we have access, we have links to Research for Life. Okay, tobacco farming and development, commercial agriculture in Bahia. Okay, source journal, Cambridge journals, article full text. Let's see how we do. There we are, okay? So this is why we stress this all the time. If you're going to use Scholar, do it this way. Uh, let me, let me, let me close this. Let me go back. Maybe we'll do one more search. I seemed, I have, okay. Uh, we have, I think I have gone, I have so much, this, this gets in the way. Okay, now. Ooh, here we are. Oh, we're back in databases, we're back in the journal, we're back in the 360 link. Let's see if this does it. Okay, let me do one more search and then we'll go on to something else. Uh, if anyone, uh, I'm gonna make some suggestions, but we can go to different, uh, different databases, different reference sources. I actually would like to go to dimensions, but if you, we want to, if anyone wants me to go back to the content, Unified Content Portal and search something, I can do that too or we could go to uh, summon. So please make some suggestions. Uh, I'm gonna look in the chat for one more. Individual, oh yes, thank you for answering that. Climate change and rural livelihoods. Okay, because that actually is multiple disciplines. Environment, health, multiple collections. Environment, health, and also agriculture. So let's put this one in. Okay. Let me close the chat. Here we are again. You can see first page, three links to research for life. Uh, oh, none, 434,000 results. I think you'll have to, uh, even though relatively comes first, you may have to refine this search a little more but there's definitely a lot of useful information. And uh, again, some of the titles have PDFs that could work that are outside of Research for Life. And I'm clicking on one and here we are. Okay, it must be an open access journal or for some other reason, they chose to make this available. Okay, so what I should do now, I have to get, oh, Okay, databases. Okay, we are now back in Research for Life. 
And if I were to choose one, do we have any suggestions on ones to do? Okay, if I were to choose one, I would like to look at this dimensions. Okay, so I have gone to Research for Life and I have gone to databases and I have opened dimensions, which is a very dynamic tool, okay? You can, and it has, you see, it has links, uh, again, I think through some, and Kim can correct me, to Research for Life available material, okay? Uh, so what I would like to do is, I think you can search by researcher, research organization, country, territory, publisher, research categories, publication type. I'm going to go to research organization. And if, oh, let me move this up again. And if I can scroll down, it says more. And I'm going to type in University of, correct me, E-R-E-R-M-A-K-E-R-E-R-E. -E -R -E -R -E. Yes. I'm looking up, it's a university, a well-known university in Uganda. Let's see. It's um, something, enter. Eh, not having any luck here. Oh, maybe I'll put it up here. Uh, university of M-A-K-E-R-E-R-E. Okay, here we are. You can look up your institution. You can look up what grants were received by your institution, what pa patents, what clinical trials, what policy documents. We have looked up the University of Makerere, which is in Uganda. And let's see, let's go to overview, let's go to Okay, you can see the volume of their publishing since 2012, 2000 a year, 1000, uh, much higher up high here. And well, this is the current year, so we don't have the results yet for the whole current year. But you can see that this university has done a very nice job of increasing its research output. Let's see, researchers. If I had done a subject one, okay, you can see, this is really neat. This individual has, is it 500? I can hardly read it here. 503 publications, I think. Citations, 12,000. The average citation per article is 24. Now look at this person, it's much higher, it's 58. Okay, and these are people affiliated with this university. Okay, so another thing that's it, you're, you're going to look at research. You're going to look at who's publishing about the same topic I have. I'm in a university now, but you could do individuals. Okay, uh, we'll do an individual search. Let me see what they're publishing about. Let me see their funders. So uh, could someone again give me, we're gonna clear this. And we're gonna put in a subject here, okay? This person in France has 15,000 publications, but only three citations per publication, okay? This person has 9,000 publications and only 780 citations. This is very interesting, okay. So let's have a topic, if we can go back to the chat. All right, let me scroll up. Let me see if I can find that one again. No, okay. Oh, okay, comparable efficacy of COVID-19 vaccine. We're going to put that in the search box and we're going to enter it. Okay.
Okay. Now you see the publishers. The Moscow Institute of <coughs> Sociology has 47 publications, only one citation. <coughs> this individual from University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, has 46 publications and 3,500 citations already. This, uh, this is so current, probably in this year, citation average of 78, okay? So here's a way of seeing who is publishing on it. And then we could look at what research organizations are publishing. Okay, Harvard, University of Oxford, Yale, Imperial College, Johns Hopkins, University of Washington, UNC, University of College of London are all publishing about this subject. Okay, now we can go to sources titles. Okay, these are the sources, nature, the journals, vaccines. Okay, so we could actually look at the journal vaccines and get the list of the publications with the links. So I'm not an expert on this. Usually when I discuss this, when I teach this, I have an individual uh, Mamoon, who is our coordinator in, from Bangladesh, and he works at the ICDDR apostrophe B, which is a big research institute that gets grants from many different organizations. The funders want to know how much, uh, what journal articles have been published, what is the uh, usage, and he's able to do all these sophisticated searches about his institution. And it's very valuable to the researchers and valuable to the uh, funders and valuable to the institution itself. Okay, so does, okay, research organizations, I think we looked at that. Uh, here's an research categories. That's also interesting, I think. Okay, and then maybe we'll do, we'll allow one, one, okay, medical and health sciences, public health services, microbiology, you might be a microbiologist and you only want to see those articles. It's pretty broad, uh, biochemistry and cell biology, 605 articles, a lot of citations already up to almost 20 per article. Okay, uh, chemical sciences, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Uh, it's up to you. You can put in chat one more suggestion, uh, maybe for one more ser keyword search in dimensions. And then I'm really open to, we'll go back to look at the databases, reference sources, and we can open another one. We could do a search in uh, one of the unified content portals. We could do a search in summon, whatever you choose to do, okay? Okay, in order to save title searches from portal itself, you need to set up a, thank you, Kim. Yes, co-digestion, -di biogas production and implementations. This is pretty precise. Let's put it up in the search box. And then maybe we'll do one more university with someone or research institution, if, if someone would like to suggest one, the first one I will do. Okay, so research categories, we want the overview. This is uh, all years, 22,000 articles on this. Uh, we would like to re research categories, could be interesting, would help you define it a little more. Engineering, environmental engineering, biological sciences, uh, research organizations. Let's see which organizations are mostly interested publishing in this, okay? Technic University of Denmark, uh, one in the Netherlands, Denmark, UK, Brazil, University of Sao Paulo. So uh, it's a different group of organizations that are actually looking at this. Whoever suggested it, I hope this is of use to you 
and we will go and look at the funders. Okay, so this is really interesting. If you have a proposal, you might be able to write to some of these organizations and say, can you fund this? Or you might be able to find a colleague to co to develop a project with and uh, jointly ask for funding. You see National Science Foundation of China, European Commission, another one, Ministry of Science and Technology, People's Republic of China, uh, UK, Spain. So it's all over the map. Brazil, National Council for Scientific and Technical, no, is that Israel. National Council for Scientific and Technical Development. Did anyone suggest, uh, I think I spent enough time on this, did anyone, University of West Indies, okay. We're gonna go to the University of West Indies. And then we got one for Guatemala. Let's quickly do these. Okay, let me close this. No. You, you, oh, I'm sorry, University of, of West Indies. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, we're in funders. Uh, we need to look at the overview. I'm sorry. There we are, up and down, but it's uh, publications from the University of West Indies. Uh, some years have been very high, but you're averaging probably 12, 13,000 a year, which is a significant number of publications. Let's look at source types. Oh no, I'm sorry, I wanted research categories. I missed it, my mistake. History and archeology. span uh, And again, you can see how many citations, uh, biological sciences, medical health, historical studies, it's broad. It's all over uh, many, many categories since it's a multidiscipline university. Okay, so there was one other in chat. Let's see if I can do the one in Guatemala. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna close this. Ooh. Okay. Oh, these are the uh, the categories of the publications. Let's go to the overview quickly. Those were the disciplines. And this university in Guatemala, where the primary language, of course, is Spanish, uh, has done reasonably well. You must be averaging 2,500, is my rough guess, publications a year. Okay. And we know that some of the dynamics may have changed because of a pandemic. And that's perhaps why this number has gone down. But you can see one year they had almost 4,000. Uh, source titles, research organizations. Uh, let's see what we want. Research categories is always useful. Medicine, public health, and archeology span and history, historical studies studies in human society, biology. So it's again, across uh, many disciplines. Uh, I think now I should, uh, I see some more requests. Will I be able to upload content for peer review? I wish my colleague Mamoun was here because he, he, there is a way, yes. There is a way of setting up an account. You see up here, log in. I have not set up an account. You set up an account, and then there are ways of extracting the information. Okay, so you will be able to use this for peer review. Correct. If you're, are you, is this question for yourself, or is this because you're on a peer review committee? This would be very useful to the people in a committee. Okay, so they could see exactly what is happening with this individual. Okay, so. Uh, at this point, we are 50, about 50 minutes out, and I have gone back to, okay, I have an idea. We are going to do a search here, 
Okay, there's your personal sign in. I'm going to search content. I'm searching content of Research for Life, and I'm going to put in. Uh, give me a, uh, an environmental term. Okay, water pollution. Okay, so I want to see water pollution. I will put in all fields because we may there may be a database on water pollution. So we're not going to limit limit it to titles. So we're going to click on search. Okay, and you can see. This is a journal, Water, Air, and Pollution. This is a journal, Water, Air, and Pollution Focus. Then here's a book on water pollution, another book on water pollution, another book on water pollution. So you see what kind of titles you're getting here. Okay, John Wiley and Sons books. And with, with the login I've used, the P is there, so you can have access to uh this is a book let's see what happens with going to john wiley and a book okay about this book table of contents get access online we have linked to the book oh uh, let's see i think i was here uh i'm sorry the bar uh from zoom keeps getting in the way and now I want to return search results. Okay, now that was books, journals, and any databases. Let's say we go into Summon and we click on water pollution. See how we're working? Now we're going to see the contrast. Okay, with this password, there are 214,000 results. So would somebody in the environment uh, add a term? Okay, full text. We have 204,000 articles, we have conference proceedings, we have book chapters, we have book reviews, and we have 280 eBooks. Okay, let's see what happens if we click on more. Okay, that gives you, if you click on more, you can even define it more precisely, what kind of material you want. So let's say water pollution, this is not my area of expertise, and, ah, okay, this is multiple disciplines, pesticides, okay. Okay, now we are down to, 40,000. And I think this is sorted by relevancy. Yes. We could sort it by newest date. Just, just, just to work this. Okay. We have our previews and we have the link to the full text online. 360 link. And it's a direct view of open access journal on and on and on. Okay. So let's go back here and I'm going to check the boxes of about four. Save this item, four or five. Okay. Let me let me get rid of the preview. Ah, okay. Random ones just for an exercise. Okay. We have five. I'm going to go back to the top and somewhere it's missing you know underneath here there it is <laughs> okay you see five are in the cart okay this is a temporary folder you can print export and so let's say i want to put these citations in my manager and i can click on zotero and somewhere a little file will pop up and I can export this to Zotero like that. And if I were to open Zotero, do you want to import the file? So export blah, 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 blah. And I have, and now in my library, it's listed. 
okay? Here are the five I just downloaded. So there are a lot of good tools in Summon that are useful for you. Are there any more questions about Summon? Are there questions about something else? You understand how I've gone from the Unified Content Portal, which is talking about the books and the journals and the databases and the reference sources and the free collections to do a precise search in Summon. And I think this is the strategy you need to use to best take advantage of the Research for Life resources. Okay, uh, search content. I would like to go back here and again, look at collections. No, I'm sorry, I did that twice today. Look at databases, look at reference sources. You, as an individual who's in a discipline, it's useful to go through these and look at the different sources and see which ones are of use to you. We're gonna click on Agora and we're gonna go from 96 or something down to 35, okay? Agricultural and environmental statistics, chemistry blue, reviews, toxic, comprehensive toxicology, okay? Uh, Encyclopedia of Earth. <clears throat> Excuse me. What I'm saying is these are underutilized resources. And once you get the skills to search in the Unified Content Portal, and once you're comfortable with Summon, spend some time on these. Uh, that's my plea to really use all the resources that are available. Uh, last but not least, I think I'll go to this and I will go to the training page. Okay. And we're going to look at the author's hub. This is really for all the individuals who are involved in training or have to give lectures. And oh, so this, I'm sorry, I went to the wrong one. This is about publishing. I'm sorry, I really wanted the librarian's hub. Excuse me. Okay. And we have information specifically about information literacy. Uh, scholarly communications, advocacy for change. This is for librarians. Please look at this. It will help you organize how to promote and, and deal with the different user groups in your institution, how to promote Research for Life resources. It's made for you. Marketing strategies is similar. Gives you a tool that allows you to define how to better market Research for Life. Okay, last but not least, Training presentations. All these follow the material in the MOOC, okay? And we have all these categories. So if you're doing a presentation or if you're doing training and you want to look at how to do the research for a unified content portal, you click here. You want to search across research for life using Summon. You search here, you click here and you download it. All of these are Creative Commons License 4.0. You can edit them, you can adapt them. There will be a new category here. Number five will become a six, become number six. And number five will have two lessons uh, uh, that are an overview of publishing. The material has been written for the English language MOOC, but we now need to translate them into a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, again, for you, anybody from a Francophone country, we'll be having the first uh, French MOOC starting in late October, running till early December. And then early in the next year, we will be having an updated English MOOC. Uh, for those of you interested in becoming master trainers, we do offer virtual courses. You have to complete the MOOC exam first, which is pretty routine. And then we, we go by regions and we'll invite you to a master trainer virtual course. Uh, I'm at, we're at 8.57 here. Are there any more questions in chat? Would you please give us the record for review? Yes, we will send the information to, thank you. My colleague just answered that. Uh, if anybody has any specific questions for me, or comments, let me put my Gmail in here. Okay, there we are. Uh, any last quick questions, we're willing to take them. 
And I think from my end, I thought we did well. I thought we had good demonstrations. It's really up to you to spend the time learning the skills, training others, and searching, uh, especially those databases and reference sources, because there's a lot of underutilized resources there. Or as my colleague Kim says, hidden gems, okay? Uh, thank you for saying the portal is a new improvement. Uh, there will be changes in the portal, but there were only so many things we could do initially. And it was a, ma a massive uh, activity with all the testing, with all the translating to the different languages, with all the technical aspects. But we too are very pleased with the new content portal. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you. New navigation is better. Relatively slower in search. Uh, you're the first person to mention that. We'll have to think about that a lot. Thank you, Onan. Thank you, everyone. Uh, any more questions? I have a direct message from Daniel. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope the ideas are useful to everyone. Uh, we had a very nice group. We will send out the PowerPoint and we will send out the uh, recording. And I know some people are not always able to attend and they can then listen to this via the recording or you could share it with your colleagues. Okay, it's nine o'clock. Uh, I've had a very busy morning doing this and working with the group in Kenya. So now I will have my breakfast. Uh, we hope to have more useful webinars. Please keep track of what we're doing. Uh, we're going to have one in French and one in Spanish, uh, Introduction to Research for Life. Those will be in October. November, we would like to have two publishers on. December, we're going to have the report and a panel from the uh, uh, Publishing and Research Communication Task Force. Okay. Uh, it's nine o'clock. Uh, I'm going to sign off if that's, I need to know how to navigate dimensions. Oh, that's good. If you go, I'm still sharing. If you go to this citation databases and you click on any of these, especially, oh, you'll be speaking English. There is information on how to use dimensions there. Also the lens and also Scopus. Okay, at this point, I will, I will stop sharing. I forgot I was still on this page. Sorry about that. I got carried away. Thank you, everyone. And we shall sign off. And I hope that this was useful for everyone who attended early in the middle of the day or late. Okay. I am the Otoka resource person for French speaking countries. That's good. Please keep in touch and please promote the webinar when the information comes out. Okay. Thank you very much.